lives apart on me. All those hours, all those years of crime will pay off once I get my moments in the spotlight. It's time to shine our eyes. Cause all I gotta do is turn up the If you hear your number, come say it along. 80, 85, 87, 96, 108, and finally 111. Everyone else, I'm sorry. Thank you for auditioning. They say the third time's the charm, right? This is only our second audition for this company. We'll get next time. Where's Ali? Right here. I'm ready. Let's move. We're not wanted here anyway. Not before you lose half your weight. <gasps> what? Just because you want to crush? Hey, sh just now stop. You shouldn't have said that. Yes. Why should our appearance or size have any? to do with our tryout results. You're kidding, right? Is this your first day in show business? That's Walter Smith. He can basically say anything to anyone. Even my parents are scared of him, and you know how long they have both been in the industry. I know, but I mean, the standard just isn't morally right. No, it's not. But what can you do? Someday, I'm going to change it. How? Maybe get picked first. You know, you have to be in the business in order to change the business. You're right. In that case, let's practice six hour days from now on. What? what? We need to let our talent speak for themselves so they can't reject us anymore. Um, my dad is working on his new play. He wants me to help him out. So I'm not sure if I have the time. What about you, Ellie? Well, I love to. But you know, I have a life. Come on, girls. We do want this, right? Yeah. We really want this, right? Yes. And we're gonna do it. Only practice makes perfect. But how can we find six hours for practice? You of all people, you work two jobs. I can wake up at 6 to get to also practice, 9 to 5 at the coffee shop, 5 to 6 for more practice, then to the lost stars, to 11, and 3 more hours of practice before bed. Jeez, how are you going to find the time to eat? That's not my priority. I can lose an extra few pounds along the way anyway, according to Walter Smith. So, are you in? Well, if you can do it with your crazy schedule and all, I don't think I have any more excuses. Yeah, me neither. Good, let's do this. I'm not throwing away my shots. Gigi, it's 5.45. Don't you have work? Oh gosh, you're right. See you guys at the Lost Stars later. See ya. Hot Coco. See, that's why we're friends. What? Oh, not again. Well, you know. Life isn't always gonna go your way. If the elevator is broken, use the stairs. One step at a time. It's tough. 
Yes, but in time, you will get there. Hey, Zach! Thanks for coming. Of course, you have always been my favorite. <laughs> sure is golden goose. <laughs> Everyone is talking about your show. See, the biggest box office of the month. So, what's next? What's on your mind now? Well, I just have an idea Whoa! about. There you are. Fifty minutes day. Third time this week. What's your excuse this time? I'm really sorry. I had an audition earlier, and the elevator broke. And well, I came here as fast as I could. Not fast enough. Look, there are plenty of girls who can replace you. It won't happen again. You have my word. Hmm. No. We'll see. Well, I think we should have a male lead instead. Male actors sell more tickets than female um, actors. Yeah, and 50 chorus members cost too much. Maybe 30. Any ideas on the cast? I want you to audition oh, to find you. Oh, what about Angela Ferdinand? She just won a Tony Award. Ah. Uh, <laughs> She's cute. <laughs> <clears throat> I approve. I was actually thinking of using someone fresh. I don't want to use famous faces. I don't care about the show. I want someone who's truly passionate about the art. Like Stanislavski said, love the art in yourself, not yourself in the art. Oh, like a rap advocate. Traditional red velvet cake doesn't use food coloring for its iconic red color. It comes naturally from the cocoa. Uh, you've lost me. So you mean you want a better cake? No! I mean, I don't want someone who's commercial or only does this for money. She has to be true to the arts. Oh, actually, I agree. Further, it's not a good call because I heard she's getting married soon. And that's why I don't put money on actresses. See, they get married, have babies, and then we have to change the cast again. Hey, men get married and have babies too. But they don't need maternity leave, and they won't get out of shape. Oh, yes, and that just means more money for production. Men, don't you guys have kids and wives too? Hey, we're just calling it like we see it. Exactly. And doesn't this make us more <laughs> objective, Zach? Zach! Oh, sorry. You guys have given me a lot to think about. Let me just take a walk to organize my thoughts. <sighs> sure. And I'll just grab another drink. Thank you so much for being here tonight. This is the last song I'm going to sing. It's a really special one, and I wrote it just last night. It's called Love Art in Yourself. I really hope it resonates with you. Thank you.
that the type he's looking for? Huh? You've got to be kidding. Look at her. She has a figure of a 12-year-old boy. Yeah, and that's just another typical wannabe. I've seen so many of them over the years. If she had in her, she would have made the cut already. Not doing some gigs at Lifehouse. This is only a place where millennials get to dream and owners get to make use of their mentality for some cheap entertainment. Zach! Oh. You do you, huh? As long as I have cases to fill to a brim with jello bills. <laughs> 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 Bye! See ya. Oh, Romeo! Romeo! With or at thou, Romeo! Deny my father and refuse thy name. Boring. Romeo, Romeo, with or art thou, Romeo? No. <clears throat> Romeo, Romeo, no! <laughs> Come on, Giselle. So, who's she? No one, just a singer from the Lost Stars. No one, huh? No one seems fascinating to you. I'm interested in no one. Cut it off. Why are you here anyway? Ah, uh, how many birds told me that you're creating a new show? You mean you overheard your father's phone call with me? How dare you call my dad a hummingbird? Are you stalking me now? Are you stalking that lady? I'm then? not! <clears throat> I was trying to talk to your dad about our new production. Oh, and I you want to cast her? No. I don't know. I like a new face. And I'm open to cast anyone. Oh, can I? No. You didn't even hear me out. No. No way. Your father would approve. Walter would kill me. Who cares about Walter? Oh, I do. He's my producer. But I was drawn. It's lakey though. Go home, it's a school night. High school is boring. Acting isn't. Maybe it's just a minor role? Or course members? Hey. I've learned much more here than at the good old school. What if I get her to go to audition? Can I join the production then? What? I have to go back. Wait, so we have a deal then? Yes, yes, yes! Juliet! Hi, I'm Giselle. I'm also waiting for Juliet. Juliet, oh Juliet! I heard that you're a wonderful, amazing, and spectacular actress. My friend just heard you sing back there, and he was captivated by your voice. He would like you to audition for his upcoming musical. A musical at your high school? No, he's a professional. Really? So, look for, his, look for his audition card. A line. Wait. Uh, what? What's your friend's name? All right. Zachary Miller. Zachary Miller? The Zachary Miller? Yes, the one and only Zachary Miller. Anyway, good luck. My face is in your hands. What was that? Oh, gosh, you wouldn't believe it. That kid just told me that Zachary Miller asked me to audition for his upcoming musical. What? Is it for real? I think so. I hope so. The Zachary Miller? Yes, yes, yes. The Zachary Miller. How many times do we need to repeat his name? He's holding an open audition soon, so just look for it, okay? Oh yes, if you two want, you can come too. He said he's open to casting anyone. Anyway, good luck. <laughs>
second, you are for real shots. Stand there, and there, and there. Ready. Well, good days. Your names are? Eleanor Walton. Julia Thompson. Jason Lee. Good luck. Somebody, someone who is in tune with me In the haze you shine so brightly Instant clarity I can see as we turn to face The crowd they hear our voices clear And proud voices come amidst the world wind sunlight through the clouds. Chisali, I'm looking forward to working with you. Giselle is doing with the step. Energy. I want everyone's energy to match yourselves. That's perfect, Gigi. Okay, moving on. But wait, sir. Can we do it again from the top? I don't have it in my body yet. What do you mean? That's perfect. No, I can do it better. Please. All right. Let's begin from the top. Be back in five. Ah, not again. How many times already? That was at least the six. Gosh, this couple never gets tired. Did you girls notice? Whenever Giselle asked her not to run through, Zachary always goes along with her. I bet this won't be the last time. Oh, I can't feel my legs. I can't feel my arms and my legs. I can't feel anything. Let's take a break. But I'm not tired. Let's grab dinner after rehearsal. We found a new restaurant that just opened up right outside of theater. Yeah, it's a treat. You have been working so hard, you deserve it. Thanks, girls. But I need to practice after rehearsal. I don't have much time left. Just how? There are still three weeks before the show. You gotta relax. I can't. This is my debut. I have to make sure that I give my best with no regrets. Gigi, you work yourself too hard. Gigi, do you have a moment? I'd like to talk to you about your solo. Of course. All right, guys, 
That's it for today. See you all at nine tomorrow. Gigi, so I've been working on the Aria Madeline sings in Act Two about her love for Roland. I've already written part of the lyrics, but this feels like something's missing. I don't know if it's the melody or the words. Would you like to hear it? Of course. Sometimes a fresh pair of ears can bring new perspective. So the verse is about Madeline's fear of opening her heart to love. It's natural to fear losing a part of ourselves. Think about how a lover may steal your heart, and how love can be all-consuming. And even the phrase "fall in love" implies a loss of control. Does a person decide to fall in love, or is it something that happens to them? That's exactly the kind of uncertainty I explore in the verse. But in the chorus. In spite of her worries, Madeline just falls for Roland. And in surrendering control, she experiences a freedom and ecstasy that cannot be felt without opening herself to vulnerability. It's a bittersweet moment, I would say. Bittersweet. Bittersweet. To his hand, surrender part of me. Who knew that letting go could feel so free and pain so bittersweet? I'll gladly sell my soul to sin as much. Gigi, that was incredible. You should write more songs and, and explore your own artistry. I knew you were special from the first time I saw you perform at the Lost Stars. Wait, what? You were there? Yeah, you were performing a song you had composed, and I couldn't take my eyes off you. You had an, you had an indescribable presence that drew me in. Seem to read my thoughts before I spoke them. I felt a thrill. I wish my heart evokes an every chord, serve to confirm our bond. Who could explain the reason for our correspondence? In faceless clouds, how long have I? Yeah, yeah, lost track of time. Oh, oh, oh. oh that yours. Thank you so much for your help. Uh, sure, any time. Cool. Oh, I oh, better oh, get going. Hughes oh. and Ellie are waiting for me. See you tomorrow. See you. Bye. Bye. Will life still stand and leave me feeling so? Will I sing too late that the music's been transposed? I'm off key, sounding like a fool. Time to bring myself back into with the world's rules. Oh.
her repeating them for a thousand times. A thousand uh, times? I'm such a terrible dancer. Mm, terrible terrible dancer. dancer. Shh, don't say that. You drink right, Giselle. They are all better than me. Yes, yes we, we are. are. I don't deserve to be the lead. Nonsense. I know you don't have the experience. She, she doesn't, doesn't have any experience. Uh, <laughs> I know you don't have any experience. And you didn't even go to acting school. But I can see somewhere deep within you. You've got the talent, Chi Chi Bear. <laughs> you sure she has talent? Somewhere really, really, really deep. So deep, we can't even see it yet. Hey, how old are you guys? You be so childish. You're all just a bunch of sour grapes. Ooh, someone's mad. Show's over. Guess who's gonna cry and run to daddy now? What's your problem? If you have anything to say, say it to my face! Oh, stop! Please! We are all in this production together! Can everyone just calm down? Not a problem. I'm not the one who's all worked out. Giselle, ignore them. They're just jealous. It's the audacity of people these days. Let's go to the new restaurant. Yeah, good food will cheer you up. I've work to do. Giselle, you have to give yourself a break. I can't. You can't go on like this. You're driving yourself crazy. Just leave me alone. Always here for you, whatever you need. All right, girls, time to. Hey. Hey, it's all right. It's all right. Maybe they're right. What do you mean? Who do you think is right? I don't know. Maybe I was just lucky, and I'm not ready to be the lead yet. Well, I say that's real talent if you can convince experienced producers and directors you're talented when you're not. Oh, look! A Junko! A uh, what? A dog-eyed Junko. That fluffy black and white bird over there, see? Oh, yes, what a beautiful snowbird. You know, Junkos are a very special type of bird. They are born blind and featherless. Yet, in around 10 days, the mothers push them out of the nest to become independent. What? That's crazy, it's killing them. Ah, one would think. That is why Junko's legs develop fast, and he learns to run and fly very, very quickly. Sometimes, it takes leaving your comfort zone before you're ready. That makes you transform into your best self much sooner than you think. I get it. It doesn't matter if I'm ready now or not. I can always choose to fight and transform to the best version of myself instead of sitting here and whining. If I have to fight, then I will. I will fight to be perfect. And I'm gonna fly so high that no one can even reach me.
for the first preview of Madeline. Joining us is the talented writer and director, Zachary Miller. Hi, Zachary. Hi, Nancy. Thank you for being here tonight. This is your first venture into the world of musicals. Your previous works have been immense successes. <sighs> Now, with Madeline, the excitement is palpable. Can you please tell us a bit about what's the story about? Certainly, Madeline is a story of an epic romance between Madeline and Roland, and it explores how a romantic relationship can shape a life. I think the audience will be transported on an emotional journey, and audience members can look forward to the transformative performance of Giselle Lee. Giselle Lee, that's no name we've heard of. How hard was it to give the leading part to a complete novice? Giselle is an extraordinary actress. Her talent and dedication are truly awe-inspiring. She has the ability to convey a wide range of emotions through her voice and presence on stage. So, to answer your question, casting was not difficult at all. It sounds like Giselle is really a true force to be reckoned with. Thank you very much, Zachary, for sharing your insight with us. We can't wait to witness the magic of Madeline and Giselle's captivating performance. Break a leg. Thank you, Nancy. Enjoy the show. Guys, come, come here. What? Angel is here. Who? The film director, Life of Heart, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Where's he? VIP seat. Santa, Santa. Guys, I heard Ang Lee is here. Why is he here? He is friends with Zachary's parents. How do I look? How is my hair? Oh, the hairdresser messed it all up. It looks fine. How's my blush? Looks good. <sighs> Oh boy, I can't breathe. What if he hate my performance? Chill. He can't see you. You guys are always at the back. Right. He can't see any of us. We're just props in the background. Welcome to the Giselle Soul Show. Everyone, house opens in five minutes. Excuse me, Tom. Can we do the song for it one more time? Again, we're running out of time. Gigi, breathe. Breathe. You got this. You've rehearsed it a thousand times. Literally a thousand times. Okay, I got this. I am not throwing, throwing away, away my shots. We need to clear the stage. Gigi. Break a leg at your debut. Show the world who you really are, Giselle. Lee. They say that love strikes like a lightning bolt in flashes, and when the flame burns out, there's nothing left but ashes. So now.
But it could have been better. Oh, who cares? Hakako na. No, I need to practice. Chisa, didn't you see the audience's reaction? They love you. You are a triumph. You deserve a celebration. But I want to say thank you to Zachary first. Oh, let's go. We have an exciting idea of a new production. Walter, picture this: a musical theater presented in the pop concert. We. Who? We, Zachary. Me and yourself. We have been working on it together. So, whose idea is it, really? Yours or Giselle's? It's ours. Trust me. This idea will revolutionize the way we think of musical theatre. Look, I'll be honest with you. This little project of yours is not going to work out. Zach, I always think of you as a golden boy. But your little fling with Giselle is starting to cost me. It's not what you think. I'm not interested in your personal affairs. Either you change your girl, or I will change your golden boy. All right. Let's pretend I never came. I'm not going to change anything. As long as I am here, Giselle remains the lead. Sure. <laughs> hey, Andrew. Yeah. Do me a favor. Dad, I'm willing to bear the risk. I don't need Walter's money. I have faith in the production. I understand you're trying to protect me, but please trust me. I'm sure with votes will be a tremendous success. Dad, Dad, the reviews are here. What is it? What did they say? Um, ah, in this musical style comes as the. Expense of sustain and storytelling. What does that mean? It means that a critic doesn't understand what Sakura was trying to do. But that can't be right. As the female lead, Miss Lee's performance is charming, but she doesn't quite run the stage as much as it runs her. That's just nonsense. The songs are catchy, but after an hour and a half, they all sound the same. I have to fight the urge to check whether I was at the Westeria Theater, not the Galaxy Arena. Don't worry <sighs> much about that, Zach. It's okay. Wait, who wrote this? Andrew Kennedy. Oh, that old fart! Everyone knows he's a real stick in the mud. His openness to experimentation is just non-existent. <sighs> Andrew Kennedy, like Uncle Andrew, who was having dinner with my dad last weekend. You know what? The show must go on. Get home. Our call time tomorrow is 11 a.m. Gigi, the show is gonna start. Is she still there? I'm really concerned. She's been so quiet lately. Besides rehearsal. We hardly see her anymore. She's shutting down. I have tried talking to her, but she always deflects. Tell me about it. You remember how she sprained her ankle when she fell at rehearsal six months ago? Every time I've been telling her to take a week off to fully recover. I've even recommended a specialist for her to visit, but she won't listen. Sometimes I wonder what's really the best way to support her. She clearly doesn't want to be helped. And she is living her dream after all. But this level of intensity is so destructive and not sustainable. So, do you think we should just tie her up and force her to rest? Don't tempt me. <laughs> I'm ready. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen. 
Please put your hands together for the electrifying fusion sensation, Revolt! A new show starring the one and only Giselle Lee. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The atmosphere here is absolutely electric, and the excitement from the fans is really palpable. Giselle's previous production revolts has truly revolutionized the way we perceive musical theater, and it has become a tremendous success. And tonight, we're in for a real treat. We're about to witness the premiere of Giselle's latest show, C'est la vie, a committed political satire set in 17th century France. This is the moment we've all been eagerly awaiting. But before the show begins, I have a thrilling opportunity to take you behind the scene for an exclusive sneak peek. If luck is on our side, we might even secure an interview with the brilliant Giselle herself. So, stay tuned with KBLC. I'm sorry guys, Giselle is a bit caught up at the moment. However, I'm free to do the interview. Will Giselle be going solo soon? Not that I know of. Are you guys dating? Next question. Giselle just broke the record, 200 shows free without a break. And now the producer just announced that she's going to do three shows per day on the weekends. Is that a bit too much? Can everybody hold up? Oh, why don't I tell you how I created the show? Uh, maybe next time. Hey. Hey, see, I have a friend called Phoebe. Mm, but do you, think, do you think she can have a sign? Oh, what can I sign for you, Phoebe? Uh, actually, Phoebe is a big fan of... Giselle, she's hoping to get Giselle's autograph. I'm sorry, Phoebe. Giselle is currently warming, warming up at the best stage, and she prefers no visitor before the show. Maybe you can find her after the performance. No worries, see. Let's enjoy the show first. Are you coming with us? Sure. When I grow up, I'm going to be just like Giselle. She's my idol. Yeah, like how I want to be like Zachary when I grow up. Whatever, you're already halfway there because both of the dads are famous. This now actually has talent. Hey! Take me to my 
dressing room. No, don't let anyone find out. You're running a temperature. She has two more shows. Let me finish them. Please. Let me know if you need anything. I'm going to ask everyone to leave. Thank you. Miss Lee has had a very long day. It is paramount that she rest. Please leave. With her. She's not okay. We have to get rid of them. Folks, not today. You have to go. She's out. She's out. Sorry, this is off limits. Is she in there? We need to see her. Miss Lee has expressed that she does not want any visitors. Is she okay? She didn't look well during the curtain call. She is fine. She is not fine. She said, open the door. Really? Please leave. Open the door, she said. Hey, Gigi, it's us. We just want to make sure you're okay. Open the door right now. Hold on, break it. Ellie, you're not helping. I am not helping. We were here every single day, and I keep telling her to take a break, but she won't listen. You want to downstage, huh? Is that what you want? Ellie! Her Majesty doesn't have time for you. <laughs> I told you, she had her own agenda. I guess we're left in the dust. Now that you're not used to her anymore. She sells under a lot of pressure. She just needs some time alone. One day, you will see who she really is. And when she gets hurt, I'll do you a favor and once say, I told you so. <laughs> you guys are best friends, right? Have you ever wondered why she didn't fight for you to get a part in this music? She doesn't have a say in which actor gets cast. Well, Sakri never says no to the Sal. So, I... We... Say something! We are only looking out for you guys. <laughs> if I were you, I would start focusing on myself. Why didn't you speak up? Maybe that was our wake-up call. Are you serious? Do you believe that nonsense? You think you said would do that to us after all these years? No. And I do think that it's time to focus on ourselves. What do you mean? She doesn't need us anymore. Don't say that. Oh, I mean, it's time for us to grow up. She sells it. She built her career. What about us? You are a great writer. Those chapters you sent me were amazing. You should be writing a novel. Have you ever thought of that? I have, but we've made a pledge to succeed to Together. We can still succeed together, just in different fields. I'm done with acting. I'm gonna be true to myself. How? By working, I thought. What? You've never mentioned you were interested in fashion. Although, now that I think about it, you do spend a lot of effort in matching your outfits, and you always have particular taste. 
See, that's what your passion is. It seeps into every aspect of your life, every action that you take. So, what's your plan now? I'll start by accepting my internship at Vogue. You got an offer already? Why didn't you tell me earlier? I'm telling you now, aren't I? Come on. Just out. There you are. Everyone is raving about the show. I'm just not in the mood right now. Not again. Come on. I didn't see any problem with the show just now. You were there, weren't you? Yeah. I nearly. Nearly what? I nearly tripped over my dress, and my transition from chest voice to head voice is still not smooth enough. It completely ruined my performance. Just out. It was hardly noticeable. It was totally fine. No, Zach. They meant everything to the performance. Don't you get it? Since when have you sung so low? What did you just say? I, I didn't mean that. That's I do want things to be perfect. I need it to be perfect. If we could have rehearsed more before the show. We are on a very tight budget and schedule. We couldn't let the whole company work overtime, just because you want to rehearse and feel, until you feel confident. Yes, you want things to be perfect. I want things to be perfect too. But sometimes it's not just about you. Of course, you can take it easy. You are the golden boys. Everyone adores you, and even your mistakes are intentional and a work of art. Just apart. to inform you, I work equally hard to get to where I am today. I'm not saying you didn't. But what did they call you? The artist of the modern theatre, the talents of the decades. Everyone's got easy on you and find reasons to praise your bold artistic directions. Just no. The script was well written as usual. It was the lead actress who couldn't deliver. What are you getting at? I'm not like you. I don't have this halo above my head. Don't you understand? They will find another girl to replace me in a blink of an eye. I can't afford one single mistake. This craving for perfection is simply unreasonable. You're bound to fail if you maintain this mentality. Bound to fail? Oh yes, that's exactly how I feel. I. I think our artistic aspirations are headed in different directions. Parting ways seems to be the best decision for the both of us. At least we can still be friends. Now I see what this is all about. All that talk about fame was nothing. You just want to go at it alone, cause you're now famous. Fame has nothing to do with this. I bet you've been thinking for leaving quite some time to now. Am I right? Using me as a springboard now? Why would you now? think like this? Why on earth would I? Of course you would. Look at you. Your standards are higher than everyone else's, and like you said, I have sunk so low. After everything I've done for you, I'm grateful for what you have done for me. But you can. But it's not perfect enough, right? You have changed. Overwhelmed by fame, I guess. And I thought you were different. That's not what I'm trying to say. Stop pretending to be innocent, Justine. This talk is useless. It's getting us nowhere. Keep your attitude. Just don't come running back for help when you realize all doors are slamming in your face, like this one. So, who are we going to meet today? Giselle Lee. Who? Sad girls always for Sacre? Yes, she's the female lead for all of Sacre's recent box office hits. Ah, uh, yeah. I heard that she had parts of Obsido. It was ugly. So they broke up. Well, I guess, but no one really knows what kind of relationship they're in. Then what is she doing here? She's just an actress. She wants to produce her own show. <laughs> oh, so she's become one of those wannabes, huh? Why can't they just stick with acting or <laughs> being a wife? Just hear out, will ya? Hi, Mr. Smith. We have a great idea for a show. I'm busy. Please. It's about exotic 
underwater empire. The sea prince Harry is determined to get revenge on his uncle Claw. Because Claw killed his father and married his mother. But it's not that easy. Claw is a merman. So Harry needs to find a way to go to land to escape from his clutches. One day, the sea king goes leads Harry to a mysterious treasure chest where Harry rubs it, the chest opens, and a spirit appears! Stop. So you combined Hamlet, Aladdin, and the Little Mermaid? Well... You don't see it that way. <sighs> Get out! Stop wasting my time. God, they're a bunch of idiots. Oh, hi, Giselle. Miss Liams, thank you for seeing me. Of course. Giselle Lee. To whom do I this honor? Thank you so much for taking the time to meet me. I would like to present my idea for a brand new musical. Oh, here. I know there's a lot to improve, but it's only the first draft. Hmm, Miss Lee, no offense. We have a lot of professional writers and directors coming in every day. What makes you think that your script will stand out? That's not just a script. I already have the whole vision, how the production is going to be, and the songs that... And... I mean, there's always a first time for everything, right? And I heard that Zachary had approached you three to produce his first musical. Enough! But he studied at Yale and Juilliard. What about you? What is your education? A graduation? Just a half make vision. To the illusion. In this game of survival, we'll play a ride. You know me, rookie. Last and nothing, sweetie. I'm so naive to believe you're unique. My dear, you're a dime a dozen. Are you chasing fame or wealth for a play? If you're after a good name, get a husband! Very rich! <laughs> you can stay in your lane, you're being insane You're neither the brains nor the money I strike out on my own, stand bravely alone No legs for my dreams Just a few Your performance to your very worth as a person. 
know. I never thought about it that way. As soon as you slipped up on stage, you saw yourself as a failure. Yes. Yes, that's how I saw myself. Why would your failure as a person be based solely on your performance in your career? Can you explain that to me? Or do you think it is more likely that you are inherently valuable, regardless of the approval you receive from others? I don't know. When you first chose to start your career in musical theatre, was it to gain the applause of others? Or was there some other reasons? Daddy took me to Phantom one spring night Hunting melodies made my soul take flight Lost my breath as Christine says to her stage together for two years now and you've made huge progress. Now, looking ahead, what do you think should be our next step? I think it's time for me to make amends. I feel ready. I want to reach out to the people I've hurt. It's important for me to mend those relationships and tell them how much they mean to me. To whom should I pray? Fate? Cupid? Francis howled at the wind. She began to feel as though the gaping floor within her would never be filled. Perhaps she wasn't worthy of true love. After all, how much had she even learned about what it was? Deep in the pits of despair, Francis counted the flows the way some people count sheep until it transported her to the world of forgetful dreams. But when she awoke, her drive to restart her quest would be reignited like a stubborn flame that refused to be extinguished. 
Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this extract from my newest book, Drawn to Life. Thank you, Juliet. I guess we have time for one question. Anyone? Hi, Juliet. I'm a huge fan of yours. How do you understand the pain of finding true love so well? Are your stories drawn from your life as well? That's a good question. It is indeed drawn from personal experience. But my true love was not a person. It was my dream to be a writer. I mean, the search for true love, whatever form it takes, is never smooth sailing, is it? It could be friendship, it could be life partner, or your career. The search for true love creates so much self-doubt along the way. Sometimes we just forget the love and only remember the doubt. So to answer your question, no, I've never been in a committed relationship before. But yes, this story is drawn from my own life. So thank you, Ms. Julia Thompson, once again for her newest novel, Drawn to Life. Should I praise Fate, Cupid, or Julia Thompson? Why are you shushing me? Embrace it, girl. Embrace it? Wow, isn't this the youngest designer at Tommy's? Eleanor Watson, isn't it? Assistant designer. There's a huge difference, you know. Well, at least you're on your way there. Maybe I'll be wearing an Eleanor Walton dress one day. Maybe... I'm sure you'll have your own collection in no time. Congratulations, Jules. I'm so happy for you. Oh my gosh, Giselle. It's been so long. I didn't expect to see you here. I'm sorry. I have been such a terrible friend. Oh no, that's not what I meant. I mean, we know you went through a lot. We are happy to see you here, right, Ali? El? Ali, please. Ali, I'm sorry. I was scared. Scared of failing. Scared of disappointing you. I didn't want you to see me fall apart. But how could you walk away like that? I... Just... I felt so ashamed, and I didn't want to be a burden. We would have never seen you that way. I'm really sorry, and I want to make things right. I promise to be a better friend, to support you the way you've always supported me. Can you find it in your heart to forgive me? Let me see if I can find it. You know, you have to find your heart first. Oh, I understand that we all have our ups and downs and fear makes us do crazy things. But let me make one thing clear. You could never, ever disappoint us. We love you just the way you are, through thick and thin. Okay, enough of this sentimental talk. Let's go get some hot cocoa. Uh, hold on, guys. One more thing. Do you have any idea of where I can find Zachary? I really want to apologize to, that to him as well. It's like he's totally disappeared from Broadway. Oh, yeah. He's done with the whole commercial theater thing. Wait, what do you mean? Maybe you can find him at the old Lost Stars. Lost Star isn't around anymore. Well, kind of. After Zachary moved on from all his big productions, he bought the Lost Stars Life Hole and turned it into a small black box theater. What's the name he gave to the place again? It's called... Serious! The brightest star in the sky can sometimes be just nearby, although lost behind the clouds. We can bring up with a plus from the crowd. Give it up for our new dance team, the Cracker and their three dance teacher, Reese, Alicia, and Kira. Hi everyone, if you have a passion for our dancing, please join us.
You get to meet with the hottest choreographers around the world. You have drink every day. It's only for step. And we are not going to go easy on you. <laughs> Ask them. But we're here 24 7 too. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to introduce to you the visionary behind Sirius, the incomparable Zachary Miller. Hello. Please just call me Zach. The Lost Stars was renamed Sirius because Zach wants aspiring stars to feel like they shine brightly and not be lost in the art world. This world needs a stage where practicing artists can perform without the pressure of the outside world. The respectable Jess Liams, everyone. Hey, Zach. Sorry to interrupt. We made some last minute changes to our dance routine. Do you have a minute to give us some comments? Of course. Be right back. Let me show you the rehearsal space. thousand four hundred and sixty one days spent all my time in reading and talk chug of a rope in when the walls are still in place we bring the words to life through the Zach! I, I thought you might have left You were looking for me? Yes, I heard that you're in charge of the Lost Stars now so I want to hear to try my luck. There's something I need to talk to you about. I hope it's not too late to make things right. I'm sorry, Zach. I was on stage and you saw right through. Burning with passion, trying to fill Messy word of hope, wanting just the best, losing myself, settling for nothing less. I was not trying to find a melody, someone who could complete my harmony in the world is filled with light. Unfulfilling dreams So consumed by the grand scheme Lost in translation Another chance Back to the prologue Let's rewind I know you're the perfect cause For our dreams I'll cherish every second That we spend Rewrite our story side by side I know my home worth inside I'll check my pride I'll make it worth your ride Stay right here I'm running from myself Once more Even when the curtains fall Skylights go up We shine for our own call We ourselves Not really find my soul There is not enough space. Take this down then. No, I like her. She's my favorite. 
It's been years. I don't think she will come back. <sighs> Such a shame. so skinny. Hi. Sorry, I never called your name. Oh, I'm Anna. Giselle. I know. Wait, are you trying to sneak into one of the rehearsal rooms again? How many times do I have to tell you? B12, second floor. Those were the days. Oh, are you here for the audition? Yes. Uh, no. I'm not sure. I haven't prepared, and I don't even know if I'm ready. Well, there's never any harm in telling your own story, is there? Rehearsing or simply observing behind the curtains. It's love and passion, Giselle. Something you should never let anyone take away from you. You know, you are unique in the sight of God. Feel it. Listen closely. Your heart will guide you, telling you what you need to do. Hi. Thank you for coming. Can you tell me a bit about yourself? Why do you want to join our production? Hi, I'm Giselle Lee. On the very last day of acting school, Mr. Alexander gave the us and sat the hardest role you play is the one that God gave. You must be brave. No Jenny stage directions, no rehearsals or scripts. So
that those behind the scenes have also played a very big part in the musical. Let's take this opportunity to show them our appreciation. Let's give a big hand to Subtitles man Management Team. <laughs> Photography Team.
頑張ります